Well, earlier we showed you the challenges facing kinship care families in the upstate. That's right. We are joined now by Kim Clifton, Executive Director of HALOS. That's South Carolina's only nonprofit dedicated to connecting kinship caregivers with available resources. We talked about lack of resources and the fact that there's only one in the state I think speaks volumes. Exactly. Yes, there are a couple of groups that have been working to um, offer support as in a kinship support group um, mm -hmm. in Richland County and uh, two actually, I think one in Lexington and they're doing a great job but in terms of full uh, support um, in terms of going into the family's home and helping them access resources and doing follow-up. Halos has been doing that since 2007. So this really affects a lot of families in, in, mm -hmm. in South Carolina. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly how many uh, that we know of. Uh, more than 74,000 children living in kinship care. So, you know, DSS prefers kinship care over foster care, apparently because there's a better chance of reunification with their, their family, but it really gets to become, you know, really complicated. So why no stipend, no financial assistance for kinship caregivers when it's given to foster families? So I think there, it's, it's a lot, there are a lot of reasons for that, and it's a complicated issue, but the short of it is there would be so many families to license because it happens on a daily basis across our state and other states. As you mentioned, there are an estimated 74,000, but there are a lot more. So one, that it would be impossible really to license all of those families, but they are licensing families now if you take the children from foster care. The problem is most caregivers, because they're family or family friends, they step in first. If the children are gonna have to be removed from the home, they say, nope, I'll take them. I don't want them to go into foster care. They don't want to risk it. They don't want to yeah. risk it. And then in those situations, unfortunately, they're not offered or they're not able to become licensed foster parents. And then like this mother that we saw, she has a hard time actually paying for, exactly. for the care. Exactly. And it's, it's really also because DSS understandably will say we're not in the business of bringing kids into care when we can keep them out of care. Mm -hmm. But what we need across the state is a more unified effort to address this growing need. You know, we're seeing the numbers spike because of the opioid epidemic. Um, certainly this crosses all um, racial, socioeconomic mm -hmm. boundaries, it affects mm -hmm. everyone. So what are the solutions that you see that could help? I know that we talked about there's a bill that's being introduced in, in the state. There, uh, the bill has already been introduced and I think it's going back to committee now. It uh, was introduced by Katrina Sheely, um, mm -hmm. Senator Sheely, and it would say that fictive kin, which is a term DSS or Child Welfare Services uses to identify family members or people who have taken children in outside the foster care system who aren't biologically related. So if I took my neighbor's child in to keep him out of foster care, mm -hmm. I would be a fictive kin. Um, and it would just recognize them the same as a blood relative mm -hmm. in considering kinship care. So in kinship care, typically there are people that care and know about these children on a personal level. Yes. And are just We've not certainly to get seen into some very system. tangential, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> loose uh, relationships too, where my barber's son needed a place mm -hmm. to go, you know, that kind of thing. But typically, yes, it's a it's either a distant relative uh, in terms of fictive kin or a, a family friend. Haley really talked about, you know, uh, maybe if, if there's no stipend given to kinship care families, at least some sort of help with therapies and medical care, because a lot of times these children come from. Uh, very dangerous uh, situations, traumatic abuse, situations. traumatic situations, and they need that. And that's really a huge mm. financial burden on families like Haley, uh, grandparents who are on fixed incomes. Absolutely. Is, is there anything being addressed on that front? Well, at least? I think so. That's what Halos does, and it's called. We, we do a navigator. Um, a pro, we have a navigator approach where we really try to. We connect. do an inset and then con uh, um, an assessment and then connect the families to resources they need. And DSS does have plans to start navigator programs throughout the state. You know, we all wish it could be faster, mm -hmm. as with everything. Um, and they are working, I believe, and I think, I, th I think talking to people at the State Department of Social Services, there's a belief that we should do it from a community response as well as a DSS response. I think we need community-based organizations that are trained and ready to meet the unique needs of kinship caregivers. And I think DSS mm -hmm. can and knows they can and will hopefully do a better job of providing those extra services. I think it is gonna require a culture shift at DSS because for so long the focus has been on only the, the foster child because that child is right. in DSS custody and, and not really being able to pay attention to the 
thousands of children that are placed with relatives each day. Mm, and that's heartbreaking right. that those numbers just keep growing too. They do. Thank you so much. Right, Thank Kim, you. Thanks so much. Came Thank from you. Charleston. We appreciate you making the drive. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. And you're watching Carolina's Family at Four. Stay with us. We'll be right back.